Last week I made this stuff, which is botanical rum, and I was I was really proud of myself. Thought it was a good video, thought it was a good product. I put it out there into the world and all the comments started rolling in and I realized, well heck, <laughs> I'm gonna have to make this again. How's it going chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I am Jesse, this is Still It, and today we're making botanical rum. Again. <laughs> I have to say straight away that I am being uh, slightly dramatic in the intro for youtube -y reasons. I, I don't want to sound ungrateful at all for the comment section here on the videos because that is not uh, my intention in the way I feel at all. We are super freaking lucky for whatever reason uh, the internet gods <laughs> have shined upon the still at comment section. YouTube can be a absolute boiling, seething mass of depravity in the comment sections a lot. And for whatever reason, you guys have always been really freaking awesome down there. So thank you so much, guys. When all these comments started rolling in uh, with opinions on what a botanical rum could be and what could work and so on and so forth, uh, I didn't begrudge those at all. I was happy to see it because, I mean, in anything like this, constructive criticism, it, it, it's everything, right? Like that's how you get better. And I'll admit, I had a very sort of singular idea of what I wanted to create when I went after this botanical rum. And I think I nailed it. I think I did really well. The thing is, you guys uh, made me realize that there's a very different path that I could have taken, and I think it might work even better. Let's get all of the ingredients into the pot still. I'll run through them for you now. Once again, obviously the ingredients will be in the description down below in both metric and freedom units for all of you Americans out there. Once we've done that, I can talk about why I've changed uh, what I've changed. So once again, it is still gonna be uh, three cups of rum, one cup this time of Buccaneer Bobs, one cup of the white pirate rum, but this time, uh, the third cup, instead of being an extra cup of Buccaneer Bobs, is going to be, uh, oh that's so close to one cup, let's just use her up. Uh, instead of being another cup of this, I'm actually going to do a cup of this, which is exactly the same as the part, I mean it is the part rum, it's just been uh, aging with some oak in the bottle. Mm, yummy. <laughs> if, uh, if you're watching this video and you're enjoying it, I almost guarantee you, you will enjoy the, uh, the pirate rum video. Uh, I think it's one of the best videos I've ever made. Uh, and for whatever reason, YouTube has decided to pick it up again at the moment. So if you wanna check it out, please do. That would help me out a whole lot and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Uh, I got some tips from a rum historian to actually make it a somewhat uh, accurately historic pirate rum. It's kind of freaking cool. The rum's in there. Let's get all of our lovely little bits and pieces in, all the botanicals. Uh, this is six grams of cocoa nibs. Next up, three cardamom pods, which is probably the thing that people commented most about in the, the comment section on the last video. Uh, I said I didn't want these in there because I didn't think it would suit. People said I was wrong. Let's give it a nudge. Allspice berries, another thing that I ended up taking out of the final recipe, uh, and the suggestions for this was to, no, stick it back in, it'll be good, but uh, preheat it first. So what I've done is uh, lightly toasted these, dry toasted them just in a, in a pan, uh, and then I've cracked them ever so slightly to make sure all the goodness gets in there. Orange peel, six grams of it, uh, and this time it's fresh. Cinnamon, uh, half a stick, quill, whatever you call it. The fact that I'm putting that in there this time I think probably gives you a hint as to uh, the different direction that I'm heading in this time. Follow along and you'll soon find out if your uh, suspicions are correct. Uh, and the last two things are half of a crushed nutmeg. Bloop. And some licorice root, uh, and this time I've actually split it down the middle and given it a little crush just to make sure that it really gets uh, infused a little bit better. All right, that is everything into the pot. The other thing that I'm going to do differently, where is my lid? Oh, there it is, uh, is I'm going to heat this up for 10 minutes. I'm going to turn it off and leave it, let it sit for two hours to macerate a little bit more uh, intensely with all those spices, and then we'll get stuck into distillation. Bam, on, there we go. Uh, yes guys, it is actually running. I know people always ask me, why is it not super noisy uh, when I'm recording these videos with the little mini pot still? Uh, lav mics and 
Sound engineering, awesome, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's talk, while this is warming up, about the, uh, the differences in the product that I'm trying to make. Okay, so the first time I had this idea in my head and it was semi-inspired by the Lunatic and Lover um, botanical gin that I linked in the last video. And that was to have this sort of delicate balance between uh, a rum and a gin rather than even kind of hinting at a spiced rum and to kind of borrow some of those flavors but have it have it sit between a rum and a gin because i know there's a lot of people out there that have uh let's call it negative feelings <laughs> towards spiced rum so i wanted to stay away from that a little bit but after reading the comments i realized that there is a, a really big opportunity to push this more towards the spiced rum flavors to stay away from gininess most uh, obviously drop the juniper berries and steer into the rum, the spiced rum flavors, but make it something subtly different. And as soon as I had that idea in my head, the idea of keeping cardamom, the idea of uh, bumping up the spices a little bit more, making them a little bit stronger, the idea of uh, introducing um, cinnamon into the mix, it made me excited to try this again. So that's why we're doing it. Uh, and I just wanted to say, guys, thank you so much for all the comments you throw into the videos. I know I do not get the opportunity to react to them nearly as much as I used to in the past. That's, that's just kind of the way it is now, unfortunately. But don't think for a second that I don't get in there and read what you guys are saying when you give me hints and tips and suggestions for whatever, you know, video production, uh, the types of things I'm making, corrections to recipes or different directions for recipes. So I just wanted to say thanks, guys. Anyway, I'll come back once this has been set for uh, a couple of hours. The wait time is over. Uh, the still's up and running, obviously. And uh, I've taken a small amount of heads, I guess we'll call it. This is my discard little jar here. It can go into that for now. Uh, once again, this is not for safety issues. I am not taking four shots. None of that jazz. Uh, this is already a drinkable finished rum that went into the still. It's just that I want to temper it and smooth it out a little bit more. And same as last time, there's stuff in here. There's spices and stuff in here. And the first little bit just always tastes a little bit whack to me. So we're going to cut that out. Uh, let me have a taste of this. Yes. And is this as a whole okay? Yeah, 100% it is. All right, so uh, this is going to be my keep jar. Uh, and we are going to be running rolling cuts here, like always. While I'm doing that, well, actually, for the next 15, 20 minutes, I'm probably not going to do anything. But uh, let's have a talk about some of the ingredients that went into this uh, and what I'm thinking. So first of all, uh, let's talk about the vanilla, because that's, I don't know, I kind of wanted to stay away from vanilla, uh, but that was in my mind's eye of trying to avoid spiced rum. As soon as I start thinking of this as spiced rum 2.0 or, you know, um, distilled spiced rum instead of maceration spiced rum, the vanilla just... I don't know. I feel like I can't avoid it. I wish I had vanilla pods, but I, I just don't. Right. And I'm really, really interested to see how vanilla tastes coming through the still. Uh, but more importantly, how vanilla tastes playing with the cacao nibs. I think that could make for a very interesting finish. And because of that, I'm actually considering back sweetening, the, back sweetening this just a touch to try and make that finish of uh, chocolatey vanilla-iness sing. Anyway, guys, uh, what I'm going to do is just every now and again taste this and call out something interesting as it comes up. Right now, there's a bunch of cardamom coming over, and you guys are 100% correct. Cardamom and rum together work well. Distillation is all done, and to be honest, there was nothing uh, that interesting or out of the ordinary that popped up. It was very, very similar to last video's distillation, other than obviously the new flavors in it. Uh, the cardamom sort of smeared throughout most of the run, but it was more predominant uh, up front. And the cinnamon came through very near the end of the run, along with the cacao nibs, which is a really interesting flavor in and of itself, actually. Uh, I could actually see just rum, cacao nibs, and, and cinnamon being pretty damn good. Anyway, we're at the point now where it's proofed down to 45%. I've left myself a little bit of uh, breathing room in terms of proof to go down to 40% with um, back sweetening and so on and so forth if we decide to. Let's give it a nudge though. Oh, actually, while we're here, I may as well pour a little of this. This is the 
the last one we made, obviously, to uh, to compare to, shall we? Let's have a taste of this first, actually, because I remember this. That's gotten better, actually, as it sits. Much smoother, more approachable, uh, and the flavors have kind of mingled together more. Anyway, the new stuff we've just made. Completely different. <laughs> I mean, it's similar, like, the rum's similar, but it's a, it is a little bit heavier and more molasses-y. There's much more sweetness going on, or perceived sweetness, all throughout it. It is a heavier, darker kind of spirit, as opposed to this, which is brighter and lighter and kind of lifted with the, with the juniper, especially. Interesting, very interesting. Uh, let's try, real quickly, some back sweetening. I'm gonna move this out of the way so I don't do something silly with it. Don't forget that, Jesse. Uh, and what I have here is some diluted honey, so it'll dissolve nice and quickly, uh, and some maple syrup. So we'll give this a couple of drops of the honey, and this a couple of drops of maple. Hmm, tempting. The honey kind of overpowers it a little bit though. It brings out, brings out the licorice and it brings out the star anise a little bit more. It makes the cinnamon make more sense. But the just the, the honey flavor is starting to dominate it slightly. I prefer the maple syrup. All right, so let's get this out of here. That's no longer an option. But actually, I think what I should do is try back sweetening it with the wood aged rum. So that is almost 50 50 between the two now. Oh, that's so much better. Okay, scratch the maple syrup idea. <laughs> Let me ditch that. <laughs> uh, honestly, both are good. It just depends what are we trying to go for here. Are we trying to augment an already tasty rum, rum in my opinion, or are we trying to make something totally different? And I think, personally in this situation, I would like to make something that's kind of different. One more little experiment, which is gonna be, uh, one part of the Buccaneer Bobs to add a little bit more of the estuary lightness, one part of this, one part of this. And then, uh, then I'll, I'll, I'll call it quits, because, you know, I could do this forever. <laughs> oh, dude, that's it. 100% that's it. Yep, I'll call it. The reason I'm calling that is I can, distinctly get the contributions from all three. And instead of the botanicals kind of slipping into being like a one dimensional, mostly cardamom kind of thing or orange, I feel like I can taste everything. That's crazy. Uh, I don't know why, but it's it's given it, I don't know why, but it's given the licorice and the star anise and the nutmeg actually a whole lot more room to shine. Bam, that's it. Okay, man, I said I was done, but let's just try a little bit of maple syrup as well. Just to see. <laughs> nah, nah, it's got all the all the sweetness it needs. That's it guys, so it's one part heavy molasses rum, one part uh, ester forward rum, and one part of the, uh, the distilled botanical rum mixed together. Thank you for the input, thank you for the comments. Um, I thoroughly appreciate it. And I'm very, very glad I took the time to Try this again, because now I've got a completely different product uh, that I will, I'm sure, enjoy. So I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, Patreons. I know it was a bunch of you guys that uh, left comments and suggested this as well. So I appreciate it, and I appreciate the ongoing support. I am going to go and blend this all together uh, and bottle up a separate bottle of it. That's the plan. So if you guys have enjoyed this, hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that YouTube-y stuff, and... I'll catch you next time, guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.